Alright, glad to see you're back with us. This is Heath Close with Build Box, and I'd like to welcome you to part six of the Make Your Own Game series. In part five, we took a look at actions by adding coins and an invincibility power up. And we looked at lighting, particle effects, and the path logic piece. Now, in part six, we're going to make our menus more interesting by animating the main menu and also the game over menu. And we are going to import music and sound effects as well. So let's start off with animating the main menu. Let's click on the menu editor button in the upper left and build box will take us up into the menu editor. And now let's double click on our main menu user interface. At the bottom of the window is where we will find the options to animate menu elements. Let's say whenever we open this menu, like when the game starts, we want the title to come down from the top and the start button to come up from the bottom. Let's start with animating the title. Let's select the title and at the bottom where the movement editor is, let's select open as this is the animation we want to happen anytime we open this menu. Let's push the record button so we are in record mode. And now let's move our title off screen towards the top. Remember, we can zoom out using the mouse scroll button and move the scene around using the space bar while we click and drag. All right, so as long as the record button is enabled like it is, once we get our title into position and let go of the mouse button, BuildBox will record the position data at that frame which we are at frame zero, and we see a green bar added to the movement editor. These green bars signify a position point for BuildBox to use, and we can add quite a few things we want BuildBox to record. As you can see, if we expand the movement editor at the bottom, if we want to rotate the title, BuildBox will remember the rotation at that frame. And as we feed BuildBox more position points along the timeline, BuildBox will extrapolate everything in between for us, much like you saw in the particle emitter in part 5. Remember how we talked about different settings for that particle start size and end size, and how the emitter would do all the work to animate the particle so that it met the requirements we set forth in the options? The movement editor extrapolates movement in the exact same manner. We just need to tell BuildBox what we want things to look like at what frame and BuildBox does all the magic for us. So now let's move our orange frame bar to the next point in time that we want to record a position point, say 20 frames in, and let's drag our title to the position we want it at and let go of the mouse button. When we do this, we see another green position point added to our timeline at the bottom. Let's take a look at what happens now when this menu opens. Isn't that cool? Doesn't that get the gears turning in your head about all sorts of neat ways to animate menus? All right, let's go back into the editor and animate our start button. Let's rewind our orange timeline marker back to frame zero and shift drag our start button off screen. Remember, we can hide or lock things in the menu tree so we can select and move things easier. And when we let go of the mouse button, we see a green position marker added to the timeline for the start button. Now let's drag our orange timeline marker to frame 20, where we had our title come to rest. Now we can drag our start button to where we want it. And when we let go of the mouse button, we see another position point recorded for our start button. Let's have a look at this now. This is really getting cool. We can also play with what we have inside the editor so we don't have to preview our game every time. Just take the editor off record and bring our orange frame marker back to zero and play it. Let's animate our character to fade in off the wall as it comes to its resting point. Let's hide everything but the walls and the character and lock the walls and let's zoom in where it's nice and easy to see. Now we have our title and start button coming to rest at frame 20, and I want our character to be exactly where it is now at frame 20. 
but I want it to fade in with some movement. So let's select the character and at frame 20, let's click in the position boxes and just hit enter. This will force build box to record a position point. Then at frame 20, let's set the opacity to one. Then we can bring our orange timeline marker to frame zero and move our character more against the wall and set the opacity to zero. And let's take off the record button and play the movement editor and have a look. This looks really cool. And this is what will happen when we open this menu. Let's click on the different stages because I want you to notice something. At frame 20 is where we have our open sequence come to rest. So if we change our frame count to 20, once the open sequence plays, the idle sequence will start. But if we click on the close sequence, you can see we didn't put the title and start button back to where we originally had it. So let's make sure we are on frame 20 and record is enabled. And let's copy and paste our positions from the start and title items from the close sequence to the open sequence. And now let's preview our menu. This is looking great. Now we'll get into the idle animation sequence by animating the start button by giving it a little shake. Remember I mentioned before that BuildBox animates at 30 frames per second. So 60 frames will give us a two second loop. Let's hide everything but the start button and get our timeline marker to frame zero and enable record and select the rotation timeline and let's make sure we force build box to record a position point by clicking in the rotation option and just hitting enter and we see the position marker appear in the timeline let's do the same at frame 10 but now at frame 12 14 16 and 18 let's cook up a little shake by changing the rotation between negative 2 and 2 degrees until again recording 0 at frame 20. Now let's unhide everything and preview our game. This is looking pretty good. Let's go into the menu editor by clicking on the menu editor button in the upper left and double click on the game over menu. Let's give some movement to our buttons when we open this menu. Let's hide everything but the buttons. Making sure record is enabled and we are on frame zero, let's drag them out to the sides. Then at frame 20, we will put them back in the middle, but this time, let's just get our original positions from our close sequence. Now I want that to be the end of the opening sequence before the idle sequence starts, so let's change the frame count to 20, so it ends when they get to the middle. Now let's go to idle and give our game over some scaling animation. Let's hide everything but the game over graphic and get it selected and enable record in our timeline at frame zero. And let's hit enter in the scale options to force build box to record a position point and move our timeline to frame 20. Now let's hold shift to scale the game over graphic up. And now let's get to frame 40 and type in one to one. Now let's take our timeline off of record and have a look at our animated menus in our game. We could spend a whole lot more calories getting all sorts of neat things animated in the menus, but I think watching this video a few times will arm you with enough information for you to really cook up something neat in your game menus. All right, so let's talk about sounds. No game is complete without music and sound effects. Although it is in style to not include music in some games today, we will just give our player the option to mute it if they so desire. So let's start by bringing some music into the game. To hear music in the game, we actually need to load music into the user interfaces that we use. Having just animated our game over menu, let's go back up into the menu editor and put music in the game over menu that will get triggered every time it loads. You can see the option for music here. Just drag an MP3 into that slot and you're done. It's that simple. 
Now when the Game Over menu is loaded, BuildBox will play that music until it encounters another UI with music on it. So if we wanted a different song to play when the game goes back to the main menu, we would select our game's main menu and add music there. But keep in mind that each menu our game loads will load that music. So if our player is dying a lot and restarting different music over and over and over, that might get really annoying. So one way to avoid this is to put music on just the start menu. And then no other menu would trigger or re-trigger music. And if we already added the music we want to another menu, we can just add it here without dragging it in again. All right, let's talk about sound effects. And the perfect place to start is right in our main menu. We have options to add sounds to a lot of different things in BuildBox, including buttons in our menus. So let's drag an MP3 into the click slot of our start button here, and let's hear it work. If we wanted to add the same sound to the other buttons in the other menus, just like the music, we don't have to drag it in again. We can just select it in the slot. Let's put the same sound in our pause menu buttons and our buttons we just animated in the game over UI as well. Now that we have animated our game over menu and added sounds to the button, there are some options we need to look at when the player dies that concern how soon the game over menu gets loaded. So let's look at some bonus info I have for you in this video. Let's double click our world node and select our character in the assets panel. And in the options panel to the right, let's have a look at some options from the defeat animation down to the game over effects. We can trigger a sound to play when the player dies by dragging in an MP3 into the defeated sound slot. Now when we die, we should hear the defeated sound play. You will also notice that a few things happen before the game over menu loads. We see our player turn into a particle effect. We see a camera shake and a camera flash. Let's take a look at these options. The defeated animation can be changed. We can just drag any image or PNG sequence into the option. We just adjust the speed at which the frames play, looping it if we wanted to, but if we didn't want to loop it and we wanted to give the death animation time to play out, we would have to set our game over effects properly. Game over delay is in seconds, so a 2 in here would give us a 2 second delay from the time the player dies to the time the game over menu loads. Camera shake and camera flash is the same as it is in the actions that we covered in part 5 and is also in seconds. Let's make our camera shake 1.5 and our flash 0.25. Fall attribute is a setting that if set to a non-zero value, it will cause the character to fall with the gravity or direction of the game. And the number represents how much the character will bounce before falling. So this is great for platformers, but also works with our game because if we set this to zero, we see our player pretty much stops dead while the game over mechanics play out. So let's make that 0.5. All right, so some bonus info wrapped around animating our game over menu and adding our defeated sound. Let's add some other sounds into the game. Let's select our swirly enemies here and give them some sounds to play when they wake up. And also, let's give our bumper a taking damage sound so that every time we trigger that cool taking damage animation that throws us up against the wall, it also plays a neat sound with it. Let's add a sound to our invincibility power-up and also to our coins. And let's hear our game really come together for the first time. Glitch is really shaping up nicely, man. This is really getting fun. We made a lot of progress in this video. So in the next video, we are going to cover making multiple game modes. Remember when I said, I see a turbo mode in Glitch's future? Well, the future is in the next video. So come on back for that one. And I will see you in part seven.